So first I would like to thank Heaven's Grace and thank the enlightened Holy Teacher's Virtues, thank my parents and in-laws and thank our grand predecessor, predecessor, thank our senior transmitter, Jin, all the transmitters, our senior lecturers and all of you for this opportunity to study together tonight. Um, so before we share the topic tonight, I would like to introduce our Holy Teacher, Jigong Living Buddha. Um, I understand that we have some new members that may not be familiar with our Holy Teacher, but actually when we received the Tao, our Holy Teacher actually through the transmitter who initiated the Tao receiving ceremony, he was the one that transmitted the Tao to us. So um, it's vital to have a mental image of our Holy Teacher because he is a very important guidance force you know, cultivating and propagating journey. And throughout this uh, this class, we're going to be um, using a lot of Holy Teacher's guiding principles and also his wisdom. So tonight's topic is on how to cultivate Tao in a work environment. Everyone, um, as we know, an essential part of what we do at work, right, is forming positive and productive connections with people. So learning how to form these connections is a method of cultivating Tao in daily life. Now, um, there is a tool. Um, the tool that actually aids us in this cultivation is the five, we call it the five cardinal relationships. Um, it is the framework that primarily describes um, the organizational structure of people in a household but extends to friendship and the workplace. So as we know, um, I've highlighted some of the um, relationship um, here. So certain relationship dynamics at work bear similarity to those in the home. For example, um, the relationship between parent and children are similar to the relationship between employer and employee. And we can see this in a person who is truly respectful of their parents. Their respect extends to their elders and superiors in general. And likewise, parents who lovingly guide their uh, children are also kind and nurturing to the youth and juniors. Um, the relationship between um, coworkers is also similar to those between the sibling and friends. So in our daily life, right, whether at home with our siblings outside, between the friends or in the workplace, um, we really sort of must have, you know, be able to cooperate um, and trust each other. So how can we go about establishing these ideal relationships in our life? By implementing the eight virtues. Um, so the eight virtues, are qualities that are inherently possessed by all of us. And through Tao cultivation, um, we inspire our true self to exemplify all eight qualities and use them to perfect the five cardinal relationships. Um, our true self is the one capable of being a wise and loving parent, a dutiful child, a loyal worker, and a trustworthy friend, to name a few. So remember our true self is the one that's, that's our life force. Um, it, it's formless, but it's pure, simple, and it, it's without the temper and habits, right? Bad habits. So now let's borrow this tree, um, the structure of a tree. We can understand how the eight virtues are nurtured within ourselves. So a tree grows um, from the root, right? and relies completely on its root to develop and sustain itself. A person also has roots. So our roots come from God who gives us the life force and then also from our parents who gave us this physical body. So the first virtue is filial piety uh, and that is our root, um, foundational value of a person. So the term filial piety uh, one meaning has filial as um, do from a son or daughter, and then piety is the reverence. So when we combine the meaning of these two words, 
we get reverence due from a son or daughter. And as we know, as a person, we form our first relationships with our parents. And our parents are our first teachers, right? So they love, they guide us, they support and sacrifice for us unconditionally. So therefore we must recognize our root and repay their grace. Um, without, uh, if we don't have um, this firm understanding and appreciation uh, of this fundamental principle, you can say that we can't, we cannot really be steady, right? And develop meaningful relationships with others, especially outside of our home. So just like a tree whose the root, if the root is not established firmly, it cannot thrive. Okay, so then next is our um, developing from that relationship with our parents um, that is nurtured by filial piety, we have fraternal love. Fraternal love is where we get along, um, we nurture, help and respect and love our siblings, right, which is, a form of filial piety in itself. And then building upon this, we develop loyalty. So loyalty is where we learn from our parents and carry out our duties and responsibilities. You know, I just um, had this moment of um, inspiration this morning when I saw my mom. Um, my mom every morning gets up 6.15. She does not have an alarm clock. It's an internal motherly alarm clock. Um, and she would get up and cook food for my brother who is devel developmentally disabled. And he goes to a program, right? Every morning without fail, she would, um, she's so dedicated to her duties to her children. So that's how we, as a student, as a child, we, we look at our parents and we learn and we establish that, that very steady sense of um, dedication at home, right? And carry out our duties and responsibilities. That is our root. And when we are dedicated without change, then we become trustworthy. So as a person, filial piety, fraternal love, loyalty, trustworthiness are the root of a person. And now we pretty much um, establish our character to be ready for society. And we tend to bring the same guiding principles and habits, if you will. So it's kind of, um, it is, uh, maybe it is possible, but it's, kind of not likely to have two sets of habits, right? So we tend to bring the habits that we have at home, outside. So um, these are wholesome habits, right? Wouldn't you say? So then we are able to exemplify propriety, um, righteousness, integrity, and a sense of shame. When we go out there and deal with people, interact with people and manage matters, we're able to, um, adhere to these principles, right? So propriety um, is the acceptable standards and manners with which we use to interact with people and manage matters smoothly with a great emphasis on our humane consideration for others. Um, righteousness is doing the correct things and carry our duties and responsibilities, much like what we have uh, been nurtured with loyalty when we are at home. And integrity is our honesty that we're able to resist temptation and or corruptions. And then a sense of shame um, is our ability to correct our mistakes, repent and not make those mistakes again. So this is a model of confusion principles, which really draws from each person's own awareness, right? And inner qualities to self-regulate our thoughts and behaviors. And if we, you know, by practicing it this way, we truly can establish our character, we can harmonize our homes and um, stabilize our society. So that's really ideal, right? That is our goal. And that is why we need to cultivate the Tao. And so uh, in sharing um, cultivation in the workplace tonight, we're going to put a great emphasis on nurturing relationships. Now, um, before we, reach those ideals, we have to cultivate. So we go, we're going to start with um, adjusting our attitude and perspectives. Um, there's a saying that a person's attitude determines how far they can go in life. Um, so where our attitude, our mentality and mindset, it's uh, in the proper place, you know, the work itself is, comes very easy, right? 
So, and then uh, next on the next um, segment, we'll talk about how to carry out charity at work. And then we'll do an introspection and gratitude. So first let's start with adjusting attitude and perspective. Um, the, the reason why I'm able to share um, these experiences is because um, like all of you who are sitting here tonight to study together, I also started out as a new member. So I, I would attend the weekly classes and I do self-study. And then um, more importantly, I also um, actually drew from the, all the transmitters um, wisdom and that um, they all embody the Tao principle. So I really learned from them as well. So um, the first one, right? The first uh, point that we're going to talk about in adjusting our attitude is smile. So everyone, I would like you guys to smile. Just smile now, right? Stretch our mouth, big smile. Do you feel that your stomach muscle and your upper chest area open up, right? It's, it's like uplifting. So the Holy Teacher Jigong Buddha and other Buddhas who have spoken in Dharma classes, right? Always put a great emphasis on the need to smile. You know, to start Tao cultivation, we must learn to smile first. And smile, smiling brings so many benefits. Um, holy teachers that it enhance our mood, right? We become happy and pleasant. And then when our when we're always happy, then it it also help it impacts our health. You know, it kind of enlivens our cells instead of uh, those cells aging out quickly, right? So we have better health. And then smile, holy teachers um, talked about this one. Smiles like a makeup, right? So sometimes we wear makeup, but this smile is the true makeup that actually open ourselves to blessings, right? How wonderful. And then when we are pleasant all the time, we have good health, um, we smile, that tends to inspire constructive behaviors in ourselves. And Hence, you know, allowing us to exemplify the Tao. And remember, Tao is the true self, right? That, that the one that's pure without bad temper and bad habit. And smiling can help build friendships. So some years ago, it's been a long time, um, I started a new job. And it was about the same time that I began my Tao cultivating journey. And then, you know, I, uh, the transmitter came and taught us the principles, right? So then I would read the Holy scriptures from saints and buddhas too and then attending the classes really helped me um so i thought yeah the buddha talked about smiling right so i i began this new job i didn't know anybody i said i want to test it out you know and so yeah that's what i did in the workplace uh whether i you know in in my in the elevator or in the break room in the hallway in the stations anywhere um and then in my job, you know, there are a lot of people that come into my office for work purposes. So that meant that I I was smile most of the time throughout the day, right? So I started to smile. And a week later, I felt the change in my, just in my mentality and just my, you know, my mood is very, you know, it became more cheerful. So it went on about two weeks, it became like a second nature, you know, whenever I saw people I just smile, you know, make eye contact. and. It, it was just like, I was I was feeling that I was happy, you know, all the time at work. So one day I was in the restroom and I bumped into this lady that I, I would, you know, pass by from time to time and we would smile at each other. And she said, what is that on your face? I said, huh? She said, yeah, that's the thing on your face. I said, what thing? I don't wear makeup. She said, no, it's not makeup. It's that you have that glow, that the light on your face. So I said, oh, I didn't notice, but thank you. But that was the time I realized that um, this simple practice of smiling really took effect. And it projected this positive energy, right, around people. And then it drew a good response. So another time I went into her again and she told me, what do you do? I thought she was asking me to describe my job. So I started to do that. She said, no, no, I don't want to know that. I want to know what you do outside work. So I said, oh. And in my mind, right, I, I mean, the, the Buddhas and transmitters, lecturers always, you know, share with us that we should spread the Tao because it helps to um, awaken others, right, who 
who um, can benefit from the true principles. So I thought, yeah, oh, I can, I can share the Tao with her. So I said, yeah, I studied the Tao. Do you know what the Tao is? She said, no, what's the Tao? At that time, I really, I did not know how to explain the Tao. And even now, it's very hard for me to explain what the Tao is. It, it's something you have to go through yourself, right? And so I said, oh, let me think of an example. So I thought about filial piety, the concept. I think a lot of you are familiar with that. Um, I said, you know how when we're at home, you know, we recognize our parents um, nurturing, uh, mercy, sacrifice, and then we repay their grace by being kind to them, talk to them in a gentle tone, help them out, and just, you know, reciprocate that love, right? She said, her eyes lit up and she said, oh, yes, I believe that very much because I, I practice that in my home too. So she said, mm, I like this style. I said, okay, great. Then she said, what do you guys do? I said, uh, yeah, we study the principles. Well, first we get the Tao blessing, right, from the transmitter. And then we study the principle and we try to put it into practice and see for ourselves, right, the result. And she said, oh, I really like that. I would like to do that. I said, great. Then next time transmitter comes and you can receive a Tao and then you can, you know, get on this journey. So yeah, this simple smile, um, it led to a sim, you know, it it led to an introduction to the Tao principles. So yeah, it really starts with ourselves, right? So it's like a positive chain effect that keeps, you know, reproducing itself, and it just starts with with a smile. Um, so here, holy teacher said, we can change our destiny if we smile constantly. Smiling can be, uh, it can it it really transforms our facial appearance, right? as we talked about in my case. And when we're in a pleasant mood, we do things, we tend to do things more successfully because we're more motivated, right? We're more positive and we can see broader. And then we'll live happily. And when we're happy, we'll also smile. So this is, actually I call this a smile formula, but the Holy Teacher calls it a virtuous circle. So this um, it's a whole lot, be whole lot better than a vicious cycle, uh, where you know one negative thing, one negative thought can, um, you know, start another negative thing, and it just goes snowballing, right? So that's not something that we would prefer. Um, and then the next point um, in talking about uh, adjusting our attitude is the need, right, in cultivation to change our mindset, right? To see the good, find good in someone, in anyone, in everyone, and see beyond the forms. So in this way that we can nurture cooperation with people instead of giving into confrontation, right? It's, this is very important in the, in the um, workplace. So Holy Teacher said, when we are able to do that, right? Just change our thought to, to focus on the good. It's like living in heaven. And also we're not gonna be angry or frustrated with people who, um, who may you know, wrong us or um, do things that we don't like or don't meet our standards, right? So uh, this is a kind of a default thing you know, for, for us in the beginning, we tend to do that, right? But it's like, if we think about it, it's like punishing ourselves with other people's er errors and mistakes, right? When we focus on their deficiencies. So, not very wise, so we just turned it to the other side. And also when we see good and find good in others, we are with the brightness, right? And then also, because we don't have these heavy emotional um, roller coasters, like right, dragging us down, and then we'll live happily. Um, I have one instance where, um, you know, I, I share in the beginning that, you know, I smile at everyone that I saw, right? But they were, there were some individuals that didn't smile back at me. In fact, they were not very friendly to me. Even when I smiled at them and made, I made eye contact, um, it seemed like they didn't like me, you know? I just got that vibe, you know? And they would have a face, like nothing, you know? Not very friendly, no, not warm. So one of those ladies joined my team about two years after I took that job, um, which is not my current job now. Um, so, I was told by my boss to train her on a few tests. So um, I went to her office and she really didn't look up to greet me. I just told her I'm here to help train. And then after a few seconds, right, she looked up from her screen and said, okay, what are we doing? So not very warm, right? And I, I 
remain polite. I said, oh yeah, I can you open a, um, a folder to get to a file? So she tried to do that, but she obviously couldn't get to it and she became agitated. And she, st she started to use profanity. She said, where the F is this thing? So it, being that I didn't know her, she didn't know me. I only knew that she was not friendly with me, right? When I smiled at her. Um, the fact that she felt comfortable enough to swear in front of me. So yeah, it made me uncomfortable. But again, because of um, the fact that I attend the class, the Tao classes, and I, I learn from the transmitters and lecturers, um, it, I remember, right, the teaching, you know, Holy Teacher's teaching. Holy Teacher said, cruel talk is not a high art of speaking. He said, the only time that we need to act immediately is, is when we must rescue someone from danger. So yeah, I, I like that very much because it's like Holy Teacher injecting humor, you know, in even the most grave situation, but it enlightens you to think differently. So yeah, I, at that time I thought, um, I got to, I gotta calm down, so take a deep breath. And then I said, I'm going to see the good in her. I don't know what good in her because I didn't know her. So I made something up, it's, it was an emergency, right? I, so I remember Holy Teacher said, just you know, say this person is great. You're so thankful for them. And that's what I replaced my thoughts with those thoughts, the bright thoughts. Then I said, okay, can I take a look? So I got closer to her and, and then I helped her find the file. Then we finished our training and I said, okay, um, um, then I also remember what Holy Teacher said, say good words, I say good words. So I, 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 um, I willed myself to say, um, yeah, actually you did a good job. And I said, I'm sorry that you have to do your old job and train on the new job. So she looked up for a second time. I saw some appreciation in her eyes. So I left and then I came back a second time. Um, I did my thing, she still didn't warm up to me. I came back a third time to train her. Then we were done. A week later, she walked by my office and all of a sudden she said, good morning, Amy. I was really shocked, so shocked. Right? It took more than two years for her to respond to me. And, but I was really happy. I said, oh, good morning. So then from that day on, every single morning, she would greet me, good morning with a smile and start a small talk with me. And she is now actually one of my really wonderful coworkers. You know, we remain really good friends at work and outside of work. Um, so yeah, chief examiner of the three realms um, had this scripture here, obsess over others' faults. One cannot make a single friend in the world. It is true, everyone has faults. So in Tao cultivation, we must focus right on the positive side because we're here to make a change, right? To change our circumstances and then to also help others see the benefits of Tao cultivation. Holy teacher said, we are, a person is like a mirror, right? So when we look at the mirror, they will, when we smile at the, at the mirror, they will smile back at us, like these two pictures here. And when we treat others kindly, they will treat us kindly back. But, you know, it may take some time, right? So like in my case, more than two years. Um, and the next point about uh, adjusting is in, important to adjust our attitude is in our communication. Um, all of these principles I have drawn from um, the Tao study, you know, in the classes like the one today being, being um, uh, presented to all of us by the Tao Center. <clears throat> yeah, I also had, in this case, I had one coworker that um, when I started one of the old jobs, you know, I it, it was shortly after that, probably, yeah, about two years into that, then I was told that I have to train to be her backup. She's in a different department and we two, the two of us do not have the same boss, right? And so um, her job was very complex and I, you know, she, she, her computer was the only one that has that software and it didn't interface with any other software and systems within our department. So I had to go into her office. So yeah, one day we got to talking and she said, so, you know, on your current job, when you apply for your current job, did it say on your job description that you had to train as a backup for me? So I, and I said, no, I didn't see that, right? So then a few days later, my boss came to me. He said, Amy, um, I heard that you don't want to train as a backup for this so-and-so. I looked at him, I was really surprised. I said, huh, when did I say that? And uh, he said, yeah, so-and-so told me. So yeah, naturally, 
you can imagine I was not happy with that. Um, but then I um, didn't really, you know, act out of um, emotion at the time. So I think I credited that to um, the Tao, you know, attending these classes, learning from the transmitters, lecturers, and then seeing how they deal with people and interact, you know, and how they manage matters. So then I remember Holy Teacher talked about in the principles, if we have problems with someone, you know, we need to directly communicate with that person and work things out, right? Instead of gossiping or grieving for injustice. So yeah, that, that stopped me from doing the, you know, the very usual thing that I might have done if I was not studying the Tao and learning those principles. So I told my boss, I said, okay, I'm going to schedule a meeting and talk to her and clear these things out, right? So I emailed her and, I, and we met in a conference room. So I said, I understand that you told my boss I didn't want to train as your backup. I said, that's not true. And why did you say that? Right? So she said, well, you know, that time that I remember I was talking to you and you said that the backup part was not on your job description. I said, look, you asked me the question, if, you know, when I apply for my job, whether that, that part, the backup part was written on the job description and I merely answer your question, no. I said, you changed my words. You told my boss that I didn't want to train as a backup. But that's a very different thing. And then I took the opportunity to clarify, right, with her as to why she, I said, I noticed that, you know, in the past couple of years, we didn't really cross paths, but, you know, I, I would smile at you in the hallway, you know, in an elevator, whatever, where, wherever that I bump into you, but you always had a face, that, like you didn't, you know, greet me back. And so that made me feel like you, didn't, you, don't, you don't like me to begin with, right? I said, is, is, is that true? You know, you don't like, me? I said, look, if you don't like me, there's nothing I can do, but I would like to work with you. Okay, I would like to work as a team and do a good job. Right. So then I saw her, you know, she was being defensive at first, but then her attitude softened, right? And she said, well, you know, it's not that. I, I do like you. It's not that. Um, but, you know, you just came off as that. I said, look, I'm sorry. I gave you that impression, but it's not true. And I said, look, can we start fresh? Right? Let's work as a team. She said, okay, we can work as a team. So after that, um, I sent an email to follow up to my boss. Um, and that boss is not my current boss. So um, he was happy with that. I just told him, um, I said, yeah, we, we communicate and we work things out. We will work as a team, right? So yeah, if um, sometimes things happen to us, uh, it seems really unfair and just, you know, it puts us in a lot of stress, but you know, good or bad things, right? Adversity or uh, favorable conditions, doesn't matter. Holy teachers that interpret everything with good intentions. People matters, things, everything will turn around, turn into good karma. Now, although I communicated with her, but I was not very happy still. I was still human, right? I still have had my bad temper, bad habits. And I couldn't help but, you know, be bothered by the fact that somebody went behind my back and, you know, did that. And so sometimes, from time to time, I still felt sorry for myself. But then I, I remember the teachings, right? The from transmitters, um, they model their teachings. Transmitter really don't teach us, but they they manifest the Tao principles in their actions. Transmitters and lecturers in our Tao Center from New York. And so I said, look, I'm telling myself instead of feeling sorry for yourself and feeling um, wronged, do something about it. Right, so whole, I again drew from Holy Teacher's wisdom, Holy Teacher Jigun Buddha's wisdom. Holy Teacher said, Everyone has faults. We are all flawed. We're not perfect, right? But however, everyone has at least one good quality that we can find. We just have to look harder and focus on that one good quality of that person. And then things will work itself out. So that I decided to do that. Um, but then I really didn't know her that much. So I thought, okay, what is what good qualities do I know about her? And I, I, I tried to recount. I couldn't find none really at the time, maybe because I was biased. I was not happy with her. But then I said, oh God, this is an emergency. I don't want to feel like this. I want to be happy. So I said, okay, I'm going to listen to Holy Teacher's advice. I'm going to make up some good qualities for her. And so, yeah, 
from that point on, every time I thought about her, I said, oh, she's so wonderful. She's a great person. I thank her for pointing out my mistakes and so that I can be a better person. These thoughts, you know, I just recycled them over and over and over again in my mind. And whenever I saw her passing my office, you know, anytime I have a, a, a thought about her, I would place the negative thoughts with these bright, positive thoughts that really yield bright energy, positive energy. So a week into doing that practice, I feel that I don't default to negative feelings about her. I feel like, you know, when I thought of her, I automatically say she's a wonderful person. And then I also saw and felt changes from her, right? The vibe is different now. And she would greet me in the morning, good morning, Amy. And then when we worked together, she smiled and she said, hey, how was your day? Uh, is it, you know, let me know if there's anything you don't understand, I can help you, right? So very friendly now. So yeah, we developed a pretty good and workable relationship after that. Um, right now I speak, you know, so lightly, but at the time, yeah, it was kind of hard, you know, because unlearning a habit is so hard, but um, I told myself, you have to go there. You have to do the work. I just do it. And then the outcome is it pays off. Yeah. And, but unfortunately when I, you know, we forged this wonderful relationship, then two months after that, she told me one day, Amy, I accepted a job elsewhere. <laughs> I saw, oh, really? I thought to myself, I started to see a lot of qualities in her actually by that time. Like she was very dedicated and she was very meticulous, right? And whatever work she did, she went back to check it three times, especially the data and all of that, the reports. So I, I did start to really like her. So yeah, when she told me she was leaving, it reminded me of the um, principle that I learned in class, right? That that was hosted by our headquarter temple. Um, the Dharma of True Nature class, right? Some of you may have heard of that because I think Lecture Kai talks about that uh, throughout the gene. Uh, Lecture Liu always advised us, accept criticism happily and willingly to offset karmic deaths, right? So in my case, yeah, I don't know what happened. Maybe I, I did something not kind to her in the past, right? So we had that stagnant energy. But through the principles, I understood, you know, I see uh, the, the, the law of causality. Um, so yeah, what we owe others in the past, uh, we must be willing and happy to, to work it off, right? That stagnant energy, you know, that somehow we, you know, make two people not vibing with each other. So yeah, when, uh, when I took the steps to really practice the principles, I saw the effect and then it validates the principles, right? So once that is offset, uh, it is like, you know, when, when we, uh, if we don't study the Tao, we don't know. Sometimes we don't, we don't know, um, you know, our words and our thoughts and actions, you know, we, 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 we did not really, we do not really sit down and examine them, right? To see if they're conformed to the true principle or are we creating karmic debts? You know, like, are we making someone upset? Um, did we create, some conflicts with people, all of those, you know, are not free. We have to pay them back. So, so in my coworkers' case, you know, in the end, uh, I felt that like the terms of the law of causality have been satisfied. So, like we, you know, how when we go to college, some students they take out student loan or car loan, house, you know, mortgage. When we pay that off, don't we feel so light, right? We don't, we don't owe the bank anymore. We don't owe each other. Um, you know, in terms of that stagnant energy between us, right? That makes us feel like, ah, just not very comfortable. And then we always start to find some faults in the person. So we paid it off. And that meant that there's no more entanglement, right? So it feels very light, you know, just happy, free, right? So once off said that karmic that, um, like Lecture Liu said, it's like we, we have a bright path, right? We created this bright path, right? We don't owe each other anymore. We're not gonna entangle. And it's like a bright sunny path and they cross the bridge. So we don't cross each other, right? So in this sense, yeah, she has gone um, to a different job and that that karmic debt was resolved. Uh, the next point that we're gonna talk about on adjusting our attitude is do our part um, in terms of duties and responsibilities. Um, yeah, so we talked about this tree model, right? That um, duty and responsibility, we learned that from home. 
by watching our parents, right? And how dedicated they are, they are no matter what. Sometimes we may or may not behave a good or not good child, but our parents, you know, never change their dedication to us, to raise us and support us continuously um, love us. Um, let's watch this a little bit. Oops. Okay, due to time, I'm not going to finish it. Um, but what I get out of this short um, clip is that um, it's so, it is so much like what we're talking about, Tao principles, right? Start, start with ourselves, right? Start with the Tao of humanity, right? Tao of humanity starts at home with ourselves first, and then we influence our, our families and then extend that onto society. But notice that this woman, you know, it, it didn't matter what the circumstances, what the treatment of others are. She decided to set an example. She decided to be a representative of the true principles and she defined duties and responsibility for others, right? Because she was doing her duties and responsibilities and others were inspired by her. So this is what Tao cultivation is about, which brings us to the next point. Um, this is a great example that Holy Teacher spoke in the scripture that I study in class. So Holy Teacher said, "We are if we are in darkness, right? We're in the dark, and we hold a lantern with light. And if our friend comes in and holds another lantern, a third friend, another friend comes in and holds the lantern. The four, fifth, six, seven friends, they all do the same thing. Um, collectively, right? We have, you know." We, we all can produce a much brighter, right? The, the brightness, right? And we all can benefit. And that's what doing our part is about. Um, so Holy Teacher said, ask of ourselves, do not ask of others, right? We, we set an example first, carry our lantern, radiate our self nature light. But Holy Teacher said, if we at some point feel that we are tired, our hand is sore and we don't wanna do it anymore. We wanna drop the lantern. And then if our friend thinks the same, another friend thinks the same, and then everybody decides not to hold the lantern, then what? Pitch black, right? It does not benefit anybody. So yes, yeah, so we, uh, doubt cultivation is to start with ourselves, right? With Regardless of what other people do or, or not do. Um, and then to see, right? The one um, point is to see the good, and, and yeah, see the good and be willing to be that representative of the true principles and define for, for others, right? So by doing that, we turn our situation, our circumstances around, you know? If we follow the principles, we have a path and the path is defined clearly by duties and responsibility. In this way, put ourselves in the driver's seat, right? So in that example where my coworker initially started to cuss, right? I could have, you know, I've heard people have taken their coworkers to HR for, doing that all the time, cousin at work. Um, and I work in a very professional environment. I was shocked to see that. However, focus on the good and we shall see a path, right? Defined by duties and responsibilities. So this way we don't get lost in emotions and attachments and then you know create more conflicts with people. We are there to, um, to really mend the, the relationships. But if we focus on the negative side of people and matters, right? We become the passengers, not the driver of the car and we lose it. And sometimes if we also give in to our own emotions and, and attachments, we, we also become a passenger of that car because we'll lose it. We'll lose it to emotions and attachments and there is no workable, workable path to find, right? So we don't wanna be driven around by people, circumstances, you know, when they make us happy, they're kind to us, we're happy when they don't, 
um, when they're mean to us, then we feel sad, you know, we do not need to be a slave of emotions. Um, the second aspect of tonight's um, class on carrying out charity. So highlight others' qualities and achievements. Um, this one I, I learned and I observed. I observed these principles in practice by transmitters, lecturers, and the Dow Center staff members. They all exemplify these great virtues, right? So yeah, I was lucky enough to have learned from them. And also in addition, you know, have learned from saints and Buddha's um, scriptures, you know, and teachings. So uh, once, remember that lady, I was training to be a backup. When she got in, you know, really good terms with me, one day she came in my office and she asked, she said, Amy, your coworker, why is she so weird? I said, why? She talks to, talks to herself. So I said, oh, yeah, I, I was used to my coworker talking to herself because I worked with her. In that job, we were, you know, we were auditors, you know, auditing school based programs uh, and programs that we fund the universities and then um, make sure they comply with, you know, administrative, administrative codes and federal regulations. So I said, actually, you don't know my coworker because she, yes, she, it looks like she was talking to herself, but she's actually sounding out those reports and findings that she um, done on her review of these school districts, right? So she's making sure that um, her report flows because a lot of times her and I, we have to present our case with our internal, our in-house uh, attorneys in front of the um, ALJ, right? administrative law judges. And so I say, yeah, she's actually working very hard. I said, don't mind her. And then she said, oh, yeah. And she stopped sp spreading the rumor from that point on. Because before I used to hear her and other people talking about how weird she is, you know? So yeah, um, holy teachers always advised us, right? When the rumors and, and gods that reach us, what do we do? Do we shut it down or do we, you know, pass on another version of that rumor and then let a snowball, you know, get bigger and bigger. So yeah, if we um, shut down that rumor, right, put in a good word for others, that's what, what highlight others' qualities and achievement is about. Put in a good, a good word for others, donate merits on behalf of others. Um, and then we, we, we would have, Gain, we would have created great merit, right? But if we do the opposite and, and be, you know, our usual way, right? It, so I, I believe if I was not studying the Tao principles and not learning from transmitters, I probably would be like one of them. I said, oh God, this is so annoying. Why is she talking to herself? Yeah, what, you know, no, right? because that would create a lot of com commas, right? So we, commas is a very scary thing. We may not know it, we, we, you know, it didn't occur to us yet, but as we learn, right? So it, it's so wonderful that our headquarters uh, instituted these um, five-year learning classes to help us learn the principles so that we don't make those unnecessary mistakes, right? And then we don't, and then realize we have accumulated a whole bucket of comic debts. Yeah, and take the blame. Um, I do remember there was one case, that's a few weeks ago. My boss emailed the team. She said, why has this report not been reconciled for over five quarters, right? So myself and two other coworkers were, were responsible for this report, but this report is inconsequential. We don't have to, uh, you know, disseminate it to any stakeholders or to report it to um, the federal government or whatever the case. It was just there, you know. But it, you know, we still should have reconciled it. But nobody hardly ever looked at it. So then, I remember um, one case right in when we had Dharma classes. And this deeply uh, impressed upon me, right? What I saw from a transmitter. So in Iowa, we had Dharma classes one year and we parked the cars right at the site where we held the Dharma classes. One of the staff members car was hit. It was like a site swiped by a Dow member's car. Right? And that Dow member probably was a new driver or something. But um, so the transmitter happened to be outside in the parking lot. And instead of saying anything, right, I saw the transmitter got down to his hands and knees to look at that, you know, uh, the spot where he got hit. And then he was studying it, you know, 
And then he took a little bit of time. Then he came back up from the floor. He said, hmm, okay, you can do this, do, do this. And this is how we can fix this, right? So I, that, I was deeply touched by that because normally you, when you run into a problem, what do people do? Oh my God, this is so messed up. What, you know, we started getting emotional uh, dramas, right? And feel sorry for ourselves. And But yeah, that transmitter's approach really touched upon me. And so I try to bring that onto my workplace when I deal with a situation where, you know, we, you know, that there are problems that arise. So in this case, I uh, replied to the team and my boss. I said, I, I'm sorry, um, we have, I have overlooked this. Um, I'm going to take a look and see um, how to correct it, right? So then I went back and I reviewed all the quarter, you know, all quarters of that report. I did find that I missed a couple of entries on my funds and appropriations. But then the thing that really actually held up that report, you know, since quarter one was my coworkers account that that had um, an adjustment that did not quite reconcile to the report. So then next day I, I emailed the team back and I say, yeah, I found I have um, done a review of this um, report. And all is left is this um, reconciling item that I'm not sure the details about it. And I worded it very carefully to my coworker. I said, so and so, could you please help to take a look and see how we can go about, you know, reconciling this um, this item on the report, right? So then my coworker was very cooperative, right? That was her account. So if I was not really following the Dow principles, I would be very usual like myself, I said, you know what, that's your account. You, you better go take care of it, right? So no, I didn't do that. So the next day my coworker got on it and she emailed the team back and said, yeah, with um, so-and-so from the division, we got it all you know, squared away. It's all reconciled now. So yeah, my boss was happy about it. So that's what I learned these Dow principles and I love to put them into practice in my work. Yeah, to in the beginning, really to test them out, right? And they all hold true so um it, it you know when there are problems that arise it, it's not uh the problem itself is the problem <laughs> it just it depends on what our, what approach that we take what what our mentality is right if we are focusing on solutions right and nurturing cooperation with people that's the Tao way right? that's cultivating the doubt um next i can help go the extra mile yeah um fresh out of college um, I, I read on a job site that said, uh, if you make a mistake, don't admit it because it will seem that you're weak, right? And I could not, I mean, they could not be more wrong. So after studying the Tao principles, yeah, I changed my mentality. And whenever we have staff meetings or we talk with our coworkers, we find out what each person is doing, their hardships. You know, if they have projects, they have to meet deadlines, they have a lot of pressure or last minute projects that come from other division administrators or whatever the case is, uh, even from our boss, right? So we would all, um, I would always say, hey, uh, let me know what I can help with, right? I can help, you know, some, by staying late or just, yeah, sometimes when my kids were little, you know, I, I usually left on time if there's no, no nothing urgent, you know? Um, but if there's something urgent, um, I, I usually ask my mother-in-law to pick them up and I would tell my boss, I can stay late. And this I learned from the transmitters too. When we have Dharma classes, all the transmitter lecturers, right? They were the first one there, the last one that left, they clean up, they they go even beyond the extra mile. So yeah, I, I bring those principles to work and it, it really works well with people around the job. Um, empathy and forbearance. There, I had a coworker who, um, always, you know, in the beginning, he always made some mistakes, right, with his reports, and then our reports depended on his reports, so when he made mistakes, we had to redo all of our quarterly reports, um, which are under really tight timelines, right, um, but since studying the Tao, uh, attending these classes, I, I found myself to, uh, to be more, you know, not as, when, when, when problems come, I, you know, I, I didn't get excited, as much as before anymore, right? So I would stay a little bit more calm. Once he came to my office and he said, oh, yeah, I, I'm i so sorry I, you know, made a mistake again. And I said, oh, I, sh I said, actually, no, it's okay. You know, I, I actually admire you because I know your scope of work is enormous, right? So I said, it's no big deal. We can always correct it. He was very appreciative of that. And then later on, he, 
he actually, um, uh, guess what? From then on, he didn't make any more mistakes. Even till now, I can't remember the last time he made a mistake that would cause me to redo my reports. So yeah, um, giving people that extra room helps them to reflect and then uh, be more strict with themselves and then, you know, do good by themselves and others. Spreading down. Um, yeah, one of the ladies that I met, um, I, I was not her friend, but she was not friendly. One of those that didn't smile at me. But I kept to the words of Buddhas. I, I would continue to smile at her and, you know, greet her. One day, about a year after I, I met her, then she, she came to my office, right? And she said, oh, um, hi, can I, um, would you like to take a walk with me? I was very surprised. I don't know how that happened. I, I was happy. I said, sure, yeah. So we went out walking and every day she would come to my office and say, you know, go out to walk. And I got to know her better. At the same time, she was going through some very uh, stressful family situations. And then I thought, you know, at that time, I, I, I was eager to spread the vegetarian diet to people. And then I started, I said, oh, yeah, I can cook lunch and bring an extra for her. So yeah, for about two months of time, I bring lunch to her. And one day she was so touched. She said, I'm so touched by you, bring me lunch, right? So at that time I thought, yeah, I should spread the Tao principles to her. Yeah, and later she did, yeah. She used, I urged her to use the Tao principles, you know, instead of making that detrimental decision that would impact her family and her children. And so, yeah, she studied the Tao principles and um, tried to put to practice. Later she did receive the Tao and attended Dharma class. So um, true charity is not necessarily giving money or you know other material forms of donation, but in our ability and awareness to really bring people together to make them feel uh, to to make them feel hopeful, and um, to establish great affinity, affinities with them, right? Because it will pave the way for us to spread the Tao. Uh, that's our ultimate purpose. So yeah, give our warmth, uh, Buddha said, you know, have a caring heart in general, warmth and energy. We bring that warmth and energy to others and we shall light the way for them. And when we have a mindset to do good, um, the people we come upon are also kind hearted. Right? So we get the help from the saints and Buddhas. So um, now on introspection and gratitude, uh, this is a scripture by a holy teacher, Jigong Buddha. One who understands gratitude things of the source when drinking water. So yeah, I I am very grateful to um, first to my cousin who introduced a transmitter from New York to me, and then um, I'm profoundly grateful to Heaven's Grace Enlightened Holy Teacher's virtues, um, to our grandpredecessor predecessor, to our transmitter senior transmitter Jin and his family all of their contribution to this Tao unit in America and around the world. And to um, our transmitter um, that transmitter wrong and all the transmitters, all the lecturers, staff members from the, from the Tao Center in uh, New York City headquarters, they have nurtured us. Um, they, without them, I would not be here today. And I would probably be creating karma like you know I would be destined to. But I'm so grateful to them for helping me recognize what my true mission is and that um, I have benefited greatly, myself and my families, uh, because we um, receive the Tao and we cultivate and we're also learning to spread the Tao. Um, one who understands gratitude upholds a childlike mind, right? So a child is pure and simple, does not get hung up on the small uh, petty stuff, you know, they they don't have a dualistic mind, right? So we ought to learn to go back to that mindset. One who understands gratitude dissolves complaints and resentment. Yeah, like in my cases, um, I could be, right, <clears throat> consumed by complaints and resentments on how some of the people treated me at work. But really the, the principles, we, we are so grateful to. Um, to the, we follow the principles, they, it's a path. It becomes a path, a workable path defined by duties and responsibilities. So we're not consumed by these things. One who understands gratitude knows to work alongside the seniors and predecessors. So I would say uh, working so closely with um, all the transmitters, um, lecturers and um, all of them. Yeah, I, I mean, they gave, they gave a thousand percent and they are devoted, they sacrifice themselves. Um, they, they don't get a penny of pay or anything like that, but 
they they actually you know donate all of their you know their wealth and their wisdom and their time and sacrifice and love they have great love for all of us so yeah we ought to follow in their footsteps so in conclusion um cultivating Tao in the workplace right so if we follow the teachings of our holy teacher uh, other buddhas and um more so follow our transmitters who all of them exemplify the Tao principles yeah if for myself my reflection is that if the Tao, if the transmitters and lecturers and staff members did not um, walk the talk, so to speak, or practice what they preach, I would not, I would, I would not follow it. You know, that's just me. But I saw them. I saw them being the living examples of these principles, and they're so great. And we have a wonderful team, right? Our New York City headquarter team, uh, made up of all the transmitters, lecturers. Um, we are truly blessed. You know, this is the first by right? launching this English only, um, the, the five year uh, learning classes, you know, how lucky are we? Um, I had not seen that, you know, anywhere in, in other units yet. And our, our lecturers, our senior lecturer, English speaking lecturers are very um, well learned and they are a model for us to follow. So yes, yeah, start with our mouth, say good words, um, say words that uplift people encourage them and give them hope, right? So that we, we made that wonderful connection and then we can nurture harmony with people, right? Everywhere we go in the home, start in the home, right? At first we have to be harmonious with ourselves, right? Find the true self, um, harmonious with ourselves and then practice that at home and then outside, extend that outside onto you know, relationships with people such as in the workplace, a very important part of our lives um, we spend about one third of our time in the workplace, right? So it's another home set that we have to manage. And then incorporate Tao principles in daily living. So the Tao principles, um, we see very clearly in that tree model, the eight virtues, right? So our end goal is to reach that ideal, the Confucian model of um, true principles, um, where we're able to, you know, naturally express those eight virtues um, that, uh, th those are the nutrients. The eight virtues are the nutrients, the best nutrients, the food for our true self, so that it can help us right, perfect those five cardinal relationships. Um, and then we each, if each person does that, it contributes to a, to, to a world of peace and harmony, right? Um, so in this way, we beautify our lives, beautify our lives with Tao cultivation, Tao principles in practice, and then we we will see the effect that take place and transform ourselves, and then we'll be able to <clears throat> setting set an example for others, and also you know helping other people beautify their lives, and that's Tao cultivation. So I am finished tonight. If I have spoken incorrectly uh, or misspoke, I ask for saints and Buddha to forgive me, and ask for our transmitters and senior lecturers to correct me. And thank you.